Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Sidetrack here, bringing you another Minecraft tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at King Lemming's mod Thermal Expansion. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait, I already know about Thermal Expansion, I've already seen one of your videos. Well, I have to go back and redo it, because Thermal Expansion is now a new edition, and it is called Thermal Expansion 3, because 3 is better than 2. Um, and uh, one of the things that was updated is the power system. So warrants um, taking a look back at. So without any more wasting time, let's take a look. Um, one of the greatest things that was added with this new um, version of thermal expansion is a tiered energy system. So instead of just having one energy cell, as you can see in front of me, we now have four. Um, we uh, have the leadstone energy cell, holds the smallest amount of energy, transfers the smallest amount of energy. You can see that it holds 400,000 redstone flux. Now, redstone flux is not buildcraft energy. Um, sounds like a lot, but you use a lot more redstone flux than you use buildcraft energy. Effectively, it's the same thing. Um, we have a hardened energy cell that holds quite a bit more redstone flux. You can see it holds 2 million redstone flux. We've got our re uh, redstone energy cell. This is kind of more compatible to the original energy cell of the last version. Um, it holds, what is that, 10, 10 million, well, big. Um, and then finally we have a resonant energy flux, uh, energy cell which holds fi 50 million redstone flux, if I'm reading all those zeros correctly. Um, now, like I said, they hold more energy as you go up. They are obviously harder to make and more resource intensive, um, and they transfer energy a lot faster. So it's good to work your way upwards. Uh, the nice thing is that the leadstone energy cell is very easy to make. So it requires a little bit of copper, uh, normal conductance cable, which is electrum, silver and gold, um, and redstone. And you just take nine uh, redstone, put them into a block of redstone, um, surround it with glass and lead, and it's a very, very easy thing to make. You can make it after you know mining for a very short period of time. The hardened energy cell is pretty simple to make. You just take your leadstone cell, surround it in invar, which again, invar is um, ferrous metal and iron. Remember how to do that if you don't look it up. <laughs> um, your redstone energy cell is typical for how it was actually made in the previous expansion. You need more electrum, you need more lead, you need a conductance coil. Um, and then now you're gonna need to use your fluid transposer um, to actually inject your frame that requires a diamond and some hardened glass um, with redstone. Now your resonant energy cell is the hardest to make. It actually requires a new ingot called enderium, um, which is made with this pyro pyrothium dust um, and then enderium blend. On the pyrothium dust you need coal, sulfur, redstone, and a blaze powder, and do, 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 do. Let's get here. Um, the Enderium blend, you basically take tin, three tins, one shiny metal. So now there's actually a use for shiny metal and some resonant ender, and that will get you four Enderium blend that, or whatever. So, um, quite a bit harder to make. Um, so, four different tiers. Now we also have three different tiers of energy conduits. Um, your leadstone is going to be your slowest has the least capacity. Hardened has a little bit more capacity and your normal redstone energy conduit has very high capacity. Um, the redstone energy conduit is made exactly the same as um, it used to be. The leadstone energy conduit is very simple. Redstone, lead, glass. Um, and the hardened is actually quite simple. You just take some leadstone, take three of them, three redstone and an invar very simple. So, um, energy cells, conduits, yes. Alright, so we talked about our energy conduits and now let's go over here and talk about the different types of fuels that you can use. Fuels are very important. They come in many different flavors. We have solid fuels and pretty obvious this is coal, wood, um, you know if you have other mods you can use you know coke or sugar coke or cactus coke, um, any kind of something, anything that will burn essentially can be used as a solid fuel. Um, your liquid fuels are things like ethanol, biofuel, oil, um, fuel. 
Um, but then we also have lava and this blazing, pyroth py blazing pyrothium that we'll talk about in a little bit. We have things that are reactants. Now this is specific to a certain type of uh, a new engine that they're now calling dynamos, and we'll get there in a second. Um, reactants can be things like sewage, hey, and sludge. Now you have a use for those if you have mine factory reloaded. Um, creosote from railcraft, seed oil, biomass, mob essence, redstone, or glowstone. Um, these are your liquid reactants. And you have solid reactants, things like sugar, gunpowder, blaze powder, tier, gas tears, nether stars. I don't know why you'd ever want to burn a nether star, but it produces a whole lot of power. <laughs> um, and then we have coolants. This is our water and our gelid uh, cryothium. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so what do you, you do with these different fuels? Well, we have new engines that we call dynamos now. Uh, some of them are going to be very familiar, like the steam dynamo in front of me. Um, the steam dynamo works just like a steam engine. You take some kind of solid material, um, solid fuel, um, you throw it... Oh, why don't we do this? Let's use coal, because that's pretty standard. You take your coal, you throw it in there, you take your water bucket, you throw your water in there, and it starts producing steam. Now this steam will allow the dynamo to produce energy. Um, all the dynamos now produce 80 redstone flux a tick. They're all standardized. The big difference in types of fuel is how quickly the fuel burns. So you can see the coal burns fairly quickly, the water goes down fairly quickly. Um, things like coal coke burn a little slower. If you use your blocks of coal, block of coal coke, it will burn even slower. If you burn saplings, they burn very, very quickly. Um, the next thing you can do with the steam dynamo, and I think this is kind of neat, is you can actually use steam. Now, obviously you can't use it in this form, um, but if you have any kind of mod that will allow you to get steam, and I can show you my um, solar turbine over there, um, you can pump that steam up into the dynamo and allow it to turn on. It will then start burning this steam and produce 80 redstone flux a tick. Very cool. You don't actually have to use anything, so this works a lot like a solar generator. Um, pretty cool. The next thing that will be very familiar is the magmatic dynamo. This you can burn lava or you can burn blazing pyrothium. Now blazing pyrothium um, is made by basically melting pyrothium in a magma crucible. Pyrothium you get by mixing sulfur, pulverized coal, redstone, and a blaze powder. It'll get you two pyrothium. Now, um, like I said, it, both of them will net you 80 redstone flux a tick. Um, however, the blazing pyrothium gives you about 2 million redstone flux, and the lava will get you significantly less. Uh, I don't remember what the number is off the top of my head. Um, Alright, next dynamo to look at is the compression dynamo. This is where things start to get a little weird. Now the compression dynamo is going to take two liquids and combine them together to make power. Um, so what you need to do is you need to have two different types of liquids. Um, you need to have one fuel and one um, coolant. So, move these around here. Um, I'm going to get a couple different ones of these because I think this is kind of neat. Okay, so you can go ahead and add your fuel and you can use water or you can use gelid cryothium. Now the gelid cryothium is made by melting cryothium in a magma crucible. Cryothium you get by mixing saltpeter, um, or nitre, I guess is from thermal expansion, a snowball, redstone, and this blizz powder. Blizz powder you actually get from a blizz rod, and the blizz rod drops from a new mod, mob, that you will find um, in a tundra biome. They're kind of a blue um, blaze, and they sound really creepy. Um, Alright, so, um, and to be honest, there's the only reason you would want to, I don't actually, I don't know why you'd want to use um, gelid cryothium, because water works just as well, it just doesn't last as long, so you need to have a source for water. So we can take and fill this up with some water, and maybe drop some ethanol in here. And this I think is kind of cool, so ethanol you'll notice, you drop it in here, and the color is orange. Well if we go over here, and say we drop oil in instead, the color is black. I like. I think that's kind of cool. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just a dork. Um, fuel, yellow, 
and um, liquefied coal that I suppose I ought to show you how to make we get you this nice gray color. I think that's kind of cool. So liquefied coal um, is pretty easy and it's really recommended to do because you can make your coal last so much longer. Um, you essentially take some coal dust, put it in a magma crucible, and you'll get liquefied coal. Coal dust you make by pulverizing coal. Pretty simple. And you also have a chance to getting sulfur. Um, so, uh, like I said, each of these produces 80 redstone flux. 80 redstone flux. They're all exactly the same. Um, the only difference is how long each of the materials will last. Um, pretty cool. Alright, last dynamo to look at. Um, is the reactant dynamo. The reactant, you're going to burn some, or I should say react, some solid fuel with some liquid fuel. Um, you know, you can use sugar, gunpowder, blaze powder, gas tears, nether stars if you're crazy. Um, and each of these lasts longer. So sugar will last the shortest period of time, gas or nether star will last forever. Um, I think it makes like 20 million redstone flux or something like that before it disappears. Um, that's per nether star. No, you don't need a whole stack. Um, and then you react it with any of these liquids. Um, these go up in time that they last, so sewage and sludge will last a very short period of time. Um, your energized glowstone will last quite a bit longer. So let's just show you this. So if we take sewage, we take Put one bucket of sewage in there and some sugar. You'll see that the sewage is eat up, eaten up very quickly. The sugar is going down reasonably quickly and it's making 80 until it finally stops. All right, so if instead we used something like another star, we'll just go extreme here. Um, let's put some glowstone in here, another star you will see that the energized glowstone lasts a lot longer. I mean, it's slowly ticking down. And the nether star will be here forever. <laughs> um, so I hope this was useful to you. You can see how much we've made in the past what, 10 minutes or so. Um, so hopefully this was useful. Hopefully um, this helps explain some of these new power systems and thermal expansion um, to you. Uh, if it didn't, please let me know. Tell me what I need to do better. If it did, then you can let me know too um, by giving me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Until next time, this is Sidetrack signing off. Have a great day, folks.